I did it. I finally bought an Xbox. After 23 years of avoiding the enemy, I'm now an Xbox. PlayStation and Nintendo were and still are my jam. Basically, everything Microsoft did, either Sony or Nintendo did better in my eyes. But now Microsoft offers so much value with the Series S and Game Pass, so I just could say no. Luckily, I now have about 42 million exclusives to catch up on that I never played. So over the next couple of months, I plan on playing loads of Xbox exclusives on my sexy new Series S. So here it is, a PlayStation fanboy on Halo 1 Combat Evolved. There's no better place to start than the main exclusive franchise. Combat Evolved was released all the way back in 2001, when I was toddling about at a ripe age of 3. So you can assume even if my family had an Xbox, I certainly wouldn't have been playing it. While the game received critical and commercial success, the most important thing it did was spawn a legacy that would last years. Microsoft's new Xbox was an unproven console, and a series like Halo gave it some credibility. Certainly enough for PlayStation heads like myself to learn about the franchise. During this series, you realise just how little I know about Xbox. Because I just never bothered engaging with it. Every bit of media consumed over the years was related to PlayStation or Nintendo, so this will be a learning experience for me and hopefully you too. The game opens up on the Pillar of Autumn, a UNSC spacecraft which is where Master Chief is being stored. I think it was like cryogenically frozen or something. I'm actually going to buy the prequel book because I'm really intrigued in the story, which is a first for me because sci-fi ain't my jam. After a little tutorial and a cool escape sequence from the ship, we meet Cortana, our AI companion. I don't want to go into specifics with the story because it's been done about 400,000 times. Instead, I would like to highlight my favourite parts of the narrative. Throughout the game, you can see Master Chief and Cortana's relationship develop, and it's their interactions that I was looking forward to. Little things like Cortana's sarcasm or Chief's way of annoying her, while I found the setting interesting and I can't wait to find out more about the Covenant and the Flood, it was Cortana and Master Chief's relationship that really had me coming back for more. Now, I know the graphics have been overhauled in the Master Chief collection, but this game has aged ridiculously well. The wide open landscapes, the dark swamps and the claustrophobic corridors of the alien-like interiors all look amazing. Before we jump into the gameplay, there are two points where I feel the game hasn't aged too well, and I can excuse at least one of them because the game was released in 2001. Firstly, some of the checkpoints are of the era. A few times I would die and get sent back 10 minutes. But the only reason why it would be 10 minutes is because the game absolutely loves throwing a feck ton of enemies at you. This kind of felt like it artificially added time to the already short campaign. Another thing was the Warthog. That final mission driving the Warthog through narrow corridors was an absolute pain in the hole and I couldn't wait for it to be over. Now that's the main negatives out of the way so let's jump into the gameplay. Bungie are the masters of gun feel. You can feel it in Destiny and you sure as feck can feel it in Halo Combat Evolved. And what is so baffling about it is that the game was released in 2001. 2001 for god's sake, all the weapons feel so good to use. Especially the shotgun and pistol. There's something about using a pistol in a shooter and when they feel as good as this I took every single opportunity to use it. There are two levels I want to highlight. We'll start off with my favourite one, the silent cartographer. This is the only level that I have history with. When I was a kid, my dad had a Dell laptop that had a Halo 1 demo pre-installed. Me being gaming mad, I had to play it, but the only USB controller we had was this stupid fucking thing that had six face buttons and square analog sticks. Like, whoever designed that controller should seriously be shot, it was absolutely dreadful. But after what seemed like hours, I finally got the thing running and got to play some of the silent cartographer. Back then, I was blown away by the open landscapes and the scope of the level, and I'm still to this day in love with it. When I was a kid storming the beach at the start felt epic, and while it doesn't feel as epic today just because games have come a long way, the level is still amazing. I have a particular memory of turning the corner and fighting two of these feckers, and I couldn't figure out for the life of me how to kill them. Well, Halo, feck you, I'm a lot smarter now and managed to do what five year old me couldn't. Now it's not all sunshine and roses, some of the levels are based around backtracking through a previously explored area, and with only 10 missions, repeating them felt kinda cheap, and we have to talk about the library mission. Endless corridor after endless corridor, fighting the same enemies over and over again. This is a really, really bad mission. The enemies are great. I love the grunts. You get too close and they just run away and their chatter is amusing. And it feels great to blast their head offs, to be honest. The other covenant enemies like the brutes and the shield wielding feckers are fun too, but a few more enemies would have switched things up a lot. The initial meeting with the flood is so cool and I love that level. It had a creepy atmosphere, but once you finish the mission, the flood becomes stale very quickly. I love their design and the premise of them, but as an enemy to fight they're just kinda meh. They're well designed, but there's one type that frustrated me to no end. The hive with rocket launchers that give you zero warning. Spend the last 10 minutes fighting a wave of enemies, then turn a corner and BAM you're feckin' exploded. They don't look any different to the other enemies, so there's nothing sticking out saying avoid these at all costs. 
as a starting point, Halo 1 is fucking amazing. I'm genuinely blown away at how this game was released in 2001. And if it's anything to go by, then I cannot wait to jump into the sequel. There's so much established here from an amazing world to two characters that I just can't wait to see more of. Now, I'm not sure what my next Xbox game will be. I might go to Fable 1 or Gears of War, so stay tuned for the next part. Anyway, this is slightly longer than usual, but I just had to talk about the game. I really appreciate you watching and would love to see you join the Discord down below. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you all on the next video.